Hi, my name is Bohad Rahmedov. Welcome to the course of Probability and Statistics. In this lecture, we're going to discuss how we can construct the confidence intervals in order to estimate the population variance. Previously, we've learned how to estimate the population mean or the proportion, and we've learned that in order to construct the confidence intervals around the point estimates, we need to use either the Z table or the T table. And it appears in order to estimate uh, the population variance, we need to use so-called chi-square distribution. Again, a simplest way to estimate the population variance would be to just estimate this using one point. So in this case, if I would like, if I have a big sample, and if I would like to estimate a very, it's a big population, sorry, and if I would like to estimate the, the standard deviation or the variance, of the population, what I can do is I can just take a small sample and calculate the variance of the sample. So the value of the variance of the sample is going to be my best estimation of the population variance. For example, I would like to be, I would like to know after the exam how the scores of the students in one or another group are going to, are going to be different. They are varying from each other, right? So probably I don't want to calculate this for all the students. And in order, so then in order to make my calculations easily easier, I can just take a small sample of students and calculate the variance there, and then estimate the variance of the results of the, for the all students using the variance of a small sample. So probably estimating the population variance with just one number is not a good way to estimate this. Probably would have to construct again the interval around the sample variance. And it appears we are going to do this in a slightly different form than before. So if the population have a normal distribution with a variance sigma square, assume that randomly selected independent samples of the size n, and for each sample, compute the sample variance as square, and then this mathematical quantity, which is going to be chi-square, chi-square, is going to have the chi-square distribution. So what does it tell you that, hey, if you have the big population, if you take lots of samples, so this population is going to have the normal distribution. If you take the lots of samples and calculate the standard deviation of those samples, then this quantity is going to have the chi-square distribution where n is going to be the size of the sample. S square is going to be the variance of a sample. And the sigma square is going to be the variance of the population. And again, in order to, so this chi-square distribution as a, as a T distribution is going to have the different shapes depending on the degrees of freedom or depending on the sample size. So the degrees of freedom is very easy to calculate. We just need to take a sample size and subtract one from this. For example, if the sample size is 15, then degrees of freedom is going to be simply 14. So depending on the degrees of freedom and depending on the sample size, we are going to have different shapes for the distribution, for the chi-square distribution. For example, if the, um, if the degrees of freedom is smaller, for example, 10, then it's going to be a little bit skewed to the left. So uh, when the degrees of freedom is higher, for example, at 20, here is a typo, sorry. So if it is 20, if it is increasing, then the shape of the chi-square distribution is going to look more as a normal distribution. So as it is decreased, it's going to skew to the left. As it is increasing, it's going to be more closer to the normal. So why it is important? It is important for us to define the critical points when we are given the confidence interval. So what we are doing is we would like to estimate the population variance within some interval, and the size of this interval actually depends on our confidence level. So basically, I would like to define the interval, so say, hey, so the variance should be here. And I would like to be sure about this interval for the 90%. What does it mean? It means that the probability that a population variance is going to be in this interval is going to be equal to my confidence level, for example, 0 
then uh, so the graphically I'm going so this confidence level is going to be the area in the middle or uh, under under this curve under the chi-square curve and then just knowing the c the value of the c I'm going to find the right critical point and the left critical point so previously for the z distribution for example the z distribution was very symmetric and if you find one of the points for example if the z is equal to the 1.9 that I'm pretty sure that the uh, this critical point, the left one, is going to be minus 1.9. So the area, so if I choose the area in the middle, these two areas there are going to be the same. I mean, so they have to be the same. But if, if they are the same, if this, sorry, if this area, if this area is the same as this one, then these two points are going to be the same in their absolute value. So here, so this, this area is the same as this one. So this is how we are going to choose the C. So we're going to choose the C exactly on the middle in terms of the areas. So that this area on the parts of the tails are going to be the same. So since this curve is not symmetric, then the right critical point is not going to be the same as the left critical point in the absolute value. That we need to find each of the critical points separately. And we're going to use so-called chi-square table in order to find the critical points. So if you remember, for the z-distribution, we were given the phi, so the cumulative function, cumulative distribution function. It is going to give you, hey, what is the area until some point z0? So if you just draw this, so it's going to be like, so you choose some point z0. So for example here, and this function is going to give you this area until this point, which is measured from the left. So it appears for the chi-square distribution, we need to measure the areas from the right. For example, if I would like to find this critical point, I need to measure the area from the right. So if this area in the middle is equal exactly to the C, and if I know that the two areas on the tails are equal, what's going to be this area? So this area is going to be obviously one minus C over T, right? Because this area is also one minus C over T. So, so overall the area is going to be equal to the one if I sum all the three areas. And again, if I would like to find the right critical point, I need to go to the table and find this area, one minus C over T. So if I would like to find the left critical point, again, I need to measure the area from the right. So basically, so I need to add this area to the C. So what kind of area it's going to be? So this area on the right tail is actually equal to one minus C over T. And this area in the middle is equal to the C. So if I add them, it is going to be equal to the two C plus one minus C over T, or simply C plus one over T. So basically, if I would like to find the left critical point, we need to go to the table, find the degrees of freedom, then I need to find this confidence level. So the area which is measured from the right until that critical point. So this is going to be slightly different from the Z distribution, but the concept is the same. So we are measuring the, 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 the area until that critical point and finding that critical point. For example, so, it, so the, so the chi-square distribution table is going to be given similar to this one. So find the critical points for the 90% level of confidence when the sample size is equal to the 10. So you need to know two things or three things in order to find the boss of the critical points, right? So you need to know the degrees of freedom, first of all, so the degrees of freedom. So if you remember, the degrees of freedom is calculated very easy. So you would need to take the size of the sample, which is 10, and subtract one from this. It's gonna be simply equal to the nine. So our next step is to find the right critical point. And if you remember, in order to find the right critical point, we need to calculate one minus C over T. So in this case, it's gonna be one minus 0 0.9 over T, which is going to be 0 0.05, right? So we need to go to the table. So here, this is the area which is, which is right to the critical point. We need to go to the degrees of freedom, which is going to be 16.91 roughly, right? So the right critical point 
So the right critical point is going to be equal to the 16 and uh, uh, 91. So this is the right critical point. So if you remember, if, if I would like to find the left critical point, the area which is more right here to the left critical point should be equal to the one plus C over T, right? So the chi square left is going to be found when, I, when the area which is more right here to that critical point is equal to the one plus C over T. It's going to be one plus nine over T, which is 1.9. If I divide this to the T, it's going to be 0 0.95. So again, I need to find a 0 0.95 here. Then the degrees of freedom is nine, right? And then the left critical point is going to be equal to the 3.325. So this is the left critical point. So once we found the right critical point and left critical point, depending on the degrees of freedom and depending on our confidence level, we can construct the interval, the confidence interval for the population's variance. So in order to construct this, we need to calculate the sample standard deviation, multiply this to the n minus one and divide this to the corresponding critical points. So the only thing which is, looks really strange here is that on the right side, I'm using the left critical point and on the left side, we are using the right critical point. So if you remember the chi-square distribution table, so it looks like very much similar to this one, so which is a little bit skewed with respect to the normal distribution. So obviously our right critical point here is going to be bigger than the left one, right? But if I take it reciprocal, then the one over right critical point is going to be smaller than the one or left critical point. So this is the reason why on the right hand side we are going to use the left critical point and on the left hand side we are going to use the right critical point. So let's do an example. So the proper operation of a typical hub appliances requires voltage level to do not vary so much. So listed below are 10 voltage levels so using the samples data, construct 90% confidence interval to estimate the standard deviation of all voltage levels for a whole year, for example. So this is the voltage levels for only 10 days, maybe. So you've got a sample. So the first thing which you have to do is you need to check whether your population is going to have the normal distribution or not. For example, we can try to do this for the sample. So if I just drew a histogram of a sample, I'm getting this kind of distribution, which is very much looks like a normal distribution. So it means that we probably can apply our technique in order to find a confidence interval for the population variance, right? So what we have to do is we need to find the variance of the sample, first of all. So let's find the variance of the sample. So if you remember how to do this, so we need to find, first of all, the mean which is going to be the sum of all of these numbers. So 223.3 plus 223.1 plus 223.7 plus and so on until 223.8 and we have to divide this to the 10. So let me use the calculator in order to calculate this. So the mean is going to be equal to the 223.53. So now we need to calculate the standard deviation. In order to calculate the standard deviation, we need to subtract the mean from every point and square this. So basically it's going to be 223.3 minus 223.53 in the square plus 223.5 minus 223.53 in the square plus and so on plus 223.8 minus 223.53 in the square. So this is going to be um, the distance between every point and the mean. So we have to find its mean, right? So we sum all of these results and divide us not to the 10, but to the nine. So this is how we are going to find a standard deviation of a sample. So uh, if, you, if you take the square root, if you don't take the square root, it's going to give you the variance. And the variance is going to be equal to 
So I'm going to use again a calculator in order to calculate this. So the standard deviation is going to be 0 0.15. So roughly it's going to be 0 0.15 in the score. So the standard deviation is simply S is going to be 0 0.15. It means that if you take the square root, it's going to give you 0 0.15. So now we are going to use all of those numbers in order to make the confidence interval. Again, if you remember, we need to so make, so in order to use this formula to construct the confidence interval, we need to find the two critical points, the left critical point and the right critical point. In order to do this, we need to calculate the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is going to be equal to the nine in this case, because we've got the sample was the 10 numbers and the degrees of freedom is going to be 10, the sample size minus one. And then we need to find, a, uh, say, the two critical points depending on our confidence level. In order to find the right critical point, we need to use the number 1 minus C over T, or 0 0.95 in this case. And in order to find the left one, we need to use 1 plus C over T. So in this case, it's going to be 0. Point, uh, so, sorry. So 0 0.05, and here's 0 0.95. So we've just found these two critical points right now, right? So I'm just going to put all of those numbers which we found to this formula to find a confidence interval. So it's going to be nine times 0 0.15 in the square divided to um, 3.32 less or equal than sigma square less or equal than nine times 0 0.15 in the square divide it as a 16.919. So let me evaluate this number first of all. So I'm going to multiply nine times 0 0.15 in the square, divide it as a 3.32. It's going to be 0 0.061, 0 0.061. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have nine times 0 0.15 in the square, divide it as a 16.919. 919, it's going to be 0 0.012. I think we made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, so here in our calculation, so this is going to be the left point and this is going to be the right point, right? So the right critical point is bigger. Sorry. So basically, 0 0.061 is going to be on the right hand side. So here we have to divide us to the 16 point 900, 16 to here. And here we have to divide us to the 3.325. And we are going to have here 0 0.061, less or equal than the variance, or more or equal than the variance. And this is more or equal than 0 0.012. So basically this is how we are going to estimate the population's variance using this confidence interval. Okay, thank you.